Alpha 5. Hello and welcome to the Ignite Youth Podcast here at Wayne Fleet BIC Church, where we discuss life through the lens of our Anabaptist roots. My name's Julie Adams, and I'm joined by Pastor Wes Hillis. Hi. How are you, Pastor Wes? Doing good. Good. Yeah, things are good. I'm getting kind of used to it being cold. Oh, it's so. not even that cold out. I haven't even switched to shoes yet. I'm still wearing sandals. For all those who feel the cold, <laughs> it feels cold out, and I'm not happy, but I'm getting used to it, so it's this fine. It's like perfect weather. No. Yeah. I would rather be like soaked in the sun, hot. Mm. It would be lovely. Because you know what? That's something I feel like everyone agrees on. It's like, yeah, I could just go for just being soaked in the sun. I, I do like the sun. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be that hot all the time. I, yeah, if I can go for it. I wish the sun just was like the heat and the sun was like at the beach and you could just pop on over there when you wanted like mm. a, you know, beach day. But the rest of it would be like this nice like pants, t-shirt flip-flops yeah well, you're the only one i know wearing flip-flops right now still <laughs> you you literally have told us that you like it's flip-flops till it snows toes out till the snow's out i don't know anyone else who does that <laughs> well. but but the rest of us are very cold um as i am I, I was cold walking over this morning to the church at 7 30 it was like what two <laughs> two degrees what? two two three degrees know. when i'm seeing my breath Okay, that's cold. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, on to warmer topics. On to warmer topics. So yes, actually, we're so we were talking about um, the Bible today, and mm-hmm. I know that maybe kind of confusing. Why are we? We're not diving into scripture necessarily. We're talking about the Bible as a whole and kind of the importance of it and why we actually read it. Mm-hmm. Um, so during Alpha, we're answering a lot of foundational questions, but we're also kind of prompting questions for people who have been in this relationship with jesus for a while now or for a long time or for their whole lives and kind of asking questions or trying to equip and challenge them in a certain way and so something i found interesting in our alpha video that we went over is how the bible is something that we as christians you know it is clear to see that you know man has written this but we believe that god has been at the center of it and it's it's god breathed Mm -hmm. um first timothy 3 16 i believe that mm-hmm. says that and so with that we believe that there's a special and powerful importance within scripture we believe it can change lives we believe that power just comes off the pages yeah. we believe that it is the living word of god and so for a non-christian to hear that about a book it can be a little confusing and say oh it's the living word of god and you look at them and be like Mm-mm. it's words on a page what do you mean it's the living <laughs> word of god and i think it's such a fascinating um thing that we do because i didn't grow up in the christian faith and so when i first got a bible i was like this is just another book and i didn't really know what to do with it i didn't know where to read and what somebody told me oh open point and go for it and and, and someone told me that and the person next to him said no <laughs> go <laughs> well, to <'cause laughs> if you find yourself in like leviticus yeah it can, you it's, might it can be, be a little yeah and they said no go to the new testament yeah read one of the gospels and i was yes. like okay and so if you're if you're hearing this and you're like oh what are they hearing the gospels because we have students who are trying yeah. to figure all this out and um so we have the old testament and the new testament old testament is much larger new testament we find you know jesus enters the picture mm-hmm. really in the physical way for the first time but yes. we see all through the old testament it pointing to jesus and and his character mm-hmm. and so the four the first four books of the new testament are the gospels they're Matthew, they're cent- Mark, Luke, and John. they're centered around the life of jesus um and his physical walk on earth and and his death and his resurrection and then we get into acts and 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 into the epistles um, which paul mainly paul writes mm-hmm. um to the churches around um the mediterranean sea and so we see the life of the early christian church at post jesus and yeah. and living out this faith and making mistakes and and doing things well and and we see this guiding and this christian community developing and it's really beautiful to be able mm-hmm. to see that because it gives us so much help today yeah still two thousand years later and so what's really interesting is how within scripture there's so many examples of the need for it um and i say that because 
if we look at the life of Jesus, how much Jesus actually quoted back to the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Like through his teaching, how he was able to reach the people around him was he made it so they, he knew they knew the Old Testament. Yeah. And constantly through the New Testament, we see Jesus reference things and and Mm -hmm. say things in a certain way because it gets people to think, oh, I've heard that before. I've read that before. Yeah. And what ends up happening is they're starting to see his view a little bit on these things. And so... And, and that didn't always happen. There were some people who were very upset, with, obviously, mm-hmm. with what he was saying. Um, but, but we see this um, happening in both ways. And so scripture is something that is highly important for us in our faith. And I think important for everyone to just, just even read, just once mm-hmm. through to go through. Um, and there was a, through the video, there was a really incredible story that was shared of, of I'm going to get to it in a little bit because I want to share some numbers first. But, um did you know that the 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 Bible is actually the most well sold? It's it's the top selling book every yeah. single year. It's also the most stolen book. It's the most stolen book. It's the most mm-hmm. smuggled book. Um, mm-hmm. it is a book that more lives have been lost to because yeah. of trying to smuggle it. Or it's been banned. It's, it's been banned in certain countries. List. People yep. have risked their lives and. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> My light switch is. <laughs> it's out of the office actually. Out of the office. Um. <laughs> And so people have risked their lives for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, it's, that's one of the things I want to share was there was a story that was shared to us about two women. Um, it didn't give them what country they were from. Okay. But in this country, the Bibles were banned. Mm-hmm. They weren't allowed to be distributed, weren't allowed to be sold. But these women knew that they needed to spread the message of Jesus through scripture. And so for three years in the cover night, they would go door to door, walk miles and miles, putting Bibles in mailboxes. Huh. After three wow. years, they were discovered. And you don't know what country this is? No. I didn't okay. say the country. Um, and after three years, they were discovered. And what ended up happening was guards showed up at their house, took them away. Yeah. Um, they ransacked their whole property. And these women's lives were flipped upside down. And they were put into a dark basement in a facility and were told they were going to be physically tortured and, and all this. Because they wanted them to break in the relationship with Jesus. Yeah. They wanted to break in their faith. But they never did. And so they threw them into solitary confinement. They separated them. They didn't have their Bibles, but they said they were continuously praying every single yeah. day for the strength to be able to get through this. And what ended up happening was, and I didn't, I didn't know this, but I, I think you can probably look it up, um, is there was a huge outpouring of people around the world for these two women mm-hmm. who spent nine months and 14 days in prison wow. um, ha- through 10 trials which all the trials, judges and guards and people and lawyers said, we're going to hang you by execu- your execution by hanging. Yep. And these women kept holding on. And they had to actually be released. The government had to release them because of the amount of pressure that was on them. Mm-hmm. And these women actually ended up going to Australia. And within Australia, they went to a church. And it just so happened that one of the families that they actually gave a Bible to Aww. actually had moved to Australia. And yeah. their lives were changed by this yeah. Bible and actually came to know Jesus. And it was a really powerful story of these 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 women who just took a mission upon them to bring the mm-hmm. message of Jesus. And they went through some terrible things. But even though they went through those terrible things, they still had this relationship with Jesus. They did mm-hmm. not break in their faith because they knew how important it was. And around the world th- things like this are happening mm-hmm. i think sometimes we take what we have for granted a little bit oh big time yeah. and well yeah, we do <laughs> but especially with scripture yeah we take this for granted in a way that we think ah, oh, i'll get to reading that you no know, tomorrow or oh i didn't yep. do my bible reading today. i'll do it some- i actually really dislike that phrase <laughs> oh i didn't do my bible reading today it, it should be something that we do do all the time we should spend time in it yeah. and so and i know i'm guilty of that as well Yep, we all are, I believe. And so, but to really have a notice and a look to say, look at what we have. We have something so amazing. Mm-hmm. We live in a country that actually allows us to have this. Yep. We should spend so much more quality time in it. And the way someone put it, there was um, one of the founders of Alpha, um, grew up very secular, um, grew up as an atheist. And he said in college, he had two friends and he was an argumentative atheist. Mm-hmm. Um, he had two friends who ended up becoming Christians. And he's like, oh, these were such good people. Why did they do this? <laughs> and he's like, well, I, I don't know much about it, so I got to discover it for myself. So he yeah. read script. He read the Bible. He read the New Testament. And he spent, like, he got in an evening, and about 3 a.m., he was halfway through Johnny and he fell asleep. And then he woke up and he kept reading and kept reading. And by the time he reached the end of the New Testament, he realized 
oh, this is true. And he said, it's like, it's like when I was reading it, the living Jesus popped out of that. And I think mm. it's a beautiful way of putting it. Yeah. And he said that now every single day I, I spend within scripture. Because when I go into it, he mm-hmm. said, I expect to encounter Jesus. Mm. And I said, that's a beautiful way to put it. Absolutely, um, yeah. There's another example Alpha gave. And one of the people said their friends, on the front of their Bible, it has pray before opening. Hmm. And I ah, thought, that's, that's such funny. an excellent reminder. It it's is. funny, but it's, it's yeah. an excellent reminder to pray to come in and to meet Jesus yeah. and have this expectation that you're going to gonna ask, interact like, with him. What do you want me to learn today? What do you want to show me today? Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's not that we're just opening and pointing. Oh, you say I'm going to be your messenger. Not that, but rather yeah. do continuously mm-hmm. have a reading plan. Um, know what you're reading because there's there's different literature that you find within scripture. You have history, you have poetry, you have law, you have mm-hmm. all these different kinds. And to know what you're reading, it helps give you a base to know what was yeah. going on in those people's lives. How can I better understand it? So it helps impact us today. And talk about it with people. Yeah. Like really talk about it. The Bible isn't something just to read on our own, but to read together. Because we're going to learn. Because you're going to pull something out differently than yeah. I'm going to pull out. And you guys are going to pull something out differently than I'm going to pull out from Scripture. And to come together and to share that. And to be, oh, I never thought of it like that. Oh, yeah. it's so much deeper than I ever thought. It can make such a difference. I remember um, we did a young adults group when I was at the Meeting House Kitchener. And it was Carrie and I and this old lady who ran the group for us. But it was only us the one, one Sunday. Yeah. Like no one else came. And she made these amazing subs, which she made her own nice. like ranch French onion, like oh yeah, like, that sounds great. Sauce, like dip, fantastic. Sorry, um, but <laughs> <laughs> it's food. You can't not talk about food. But we were talking about you know why did Jesus curse the fig tree, and I shared some of my example from reading what I learned from Bible college and, and doing an in more depth study, and. The older lady said, I've been a Christian for so long, I've never heard it in that way. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how many times do we just keep things in instead of actually sharing it? And I want us to take the example of the two women that I talked about and how they felt the need Mm -hmm. to share. It wasn't that they just wanted to. It was the need that they had to do this. They were compelled to do it, yeah. And so I I think that's a great word is... I think we should all be compelled to share what we're reading in scripture, share what we find, to share, you know, the message of Jesus and the Bible, even though, yes, it is an old book, but because of how old it is and how trustworthy we we know it is, it should give us more reason to go and to share it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's almost consequence-less. Yes. Word? Yes. Here. I think, yeah. I think C.S. We said this before, but C.S. Lewis said it. Um, you know, if if Scripture is and Christianity is not true, then is it of no importance? Mm-hmm. But if Christianity and Scripture is true, it is of the highest importance. There is nothing more important. Yeah. And so, to not to to not share it, I almost feel like there's more consequence than yeah. than to sharing it, especially in our context of where we live. Yeah. Um, and so go and and share and share with who you're reading and if you want to get into a reading plan our church does this quite often mm, where yeah. we do a you version reading plan um or ask a friend what they're reading absolutely. or one of the youth leaders if you're uh, a youth listening yeah. ask someone for a recommendation i yeah. mean wes would help you i'm sure um anyone anyone would help you find yeah. a, a plan that suits your need for now yeah but yeah that's yeah. that's sorry i, I it's, it's a it's a cut off kind of podcast that's all i got for us perfect (laughs) but yeah that's a good encouragement to end on yeah so if you're looking for a reading plan yeah or you want to ask wes any bible questions Mm -hmm. or any questions in general you can reach him at wes at waynefleetbic.com and my email address is julie at waynefleetbic.com so thank you for tuning in come back next week see you then bye bye